The entrepreneurial spirit of, of MIT has, of course, been a thriving one for many decades. What's very exciting uh, to us uh, is to see that entrepreneurial spirit now uh, turn and focus so squarely on energy. Energy is the biggest problem that we face clearly today, and if we don't fix it, we're going to have problems later in our life. Our children are going to have problems. It's just a train wreck waiting to happen. It requires great innovation in energy technology, but it also requires innovation in business models and innovation in policy. So we're taking a system-wide approach, looking at the engineering side as well as the policy side, and then getting down to even the social science side of things, so bringing the human into it. And because MIT brings together such a high level of competence in all these different areas, it makes it a really unique place to be able to study energy. Renewables technologies are clearly central to a long-term reduced carbon future. I think actually we are going to see a dramatic increase in the deployment of solar energy technologies. Super thin photovoltaics, uh, organic photovoltaics. Materials which may be very, very important in dramatic cost reduction if one can produce them in ways that allow their easy application. Black silicon is a material that was discovered around 2000. Normally, infrared light passes straight through silicon, and that's what most of our solar cells are made out of today. However, in this black silicon, infrared light is absorbed by the silicon. So if you can take that absorption and turn it into electrons, you have the potential to double your efficiency. We are looking into it specifically for photovoltaic applications. Of course, wind today is playing a important role. At MIT, one of the major focal points is looking at putting wind quite a ways offshore into very deep water. People who used to be doing work in petroleum platforms are now adapting that to the question of how can we put a 5 or a 10 megawatt wind turbine in deep water. So, let me give you a final test. Question. How many of these 1 megawatt windmills would it take to match the power output of this nuclear power site. 10,000. We basically uh, put together a forum called Energy Myths and Realities. And what was amazing about that panel discussion was that we all sort of came to the same conclusion. The inconvenient truth number two. We all need nuclear to make this work. At MIT, we are pursuing new generations of nuclear technology in a variety of ways. A very important way is to look at, for example, advanced fuels. Everything from new designs of fuel shapes, like annular fuels, to nanofluids to improve the heat management in a reactor. We are looking at the policies around how nuclear power would, would develop how nuclear waste would be managed. So it's a very, very broad agenda in terms of nuclear fission, which again can be a major contributor to climate risk mitigation. When you talk about climate change, you really can't get to the solution unless you talk about coal. Coal puts out about 40% of the world's CO2 emissions. So what's going to replace coal in the, the coming decades? Carbon sequestration is a way to burn fossil fuels without having their emissions go into the atmosphere. And then we take that CO2 and we store it in the ground where a lot of the fossil energy came from in the first place. One of our programs, a carbon sequestration consortium, is viewed as a pioneering program in not only exploring the issues around carbon sequestration, but frankly in, in raising its level of importance in the broader national and global discussion. For carbon capture and storage to, to really be successful, it's going to take both, both a mix of policy and technology to move us forward. Commercializing things in the energy area is very difficult. It's a longer scope, it's a bigger scale, you have to consider the political ramifications. So we're trying to train our uh, entrepreneurs here at MIT to address these new challenges. The Sloan School and their interests in energy um, make it especially easy for us to start to innovate and have an entrepreneurial bent because you can have a couple scientists who come up with a really good idea and very easily you can walk over to the Sloan School, run it by a few people and put together a team to be able to put together a venture. The more different perspectives that we can get on this issue will really help continue the MIT's legacy of being at the front edge of things that are relevant for industry and our energy future. 
Everybody wants to get involved in energy. The question is, how do you do it? No one's going to solve this by one singular Herculean effort. Being a convener across the whole innovation chain is another critical role by our alumni. Alumni have connections in industry and you know, in finance and out in the field, um, whether they're doing research or um, working for companies that they can bring back to MIT. It's our mission. We want to bring our knowledge to bear on the world's greatest challenges, and that's what we're doing. Today's frontiers can't be found on a map. They're being explored in our classrooms, in our laboratories, in our startups. I'm confident that's what's happening right here at this extraordinary institution. We're seeing a lot of students coming up through the ranks that are extremely excited, motivated, hardworking, and getting a lot of research done. Energy puts together both the pieces of the science that I'm very interested in and the ability to serve my community and to serve my society and to hopefully make a better place where we have a better sustainable energy system. Today, as we face the deeply linked challenges of economic insecurity, energy insecurity, and global climate change, we should see a profoundly hopeful, practical path to America's future through rapid, sustained, broad-based, and intensive investment in basic energy research. I believe that we stand on the verge of a global energy technology revolution.